Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install and also showcasing the paid software called Epicam HD, which basically allows you to use your smartphone, either an Apple iPhone or an Android phone, as a wireless webcam for any PC with the software installed. And you can also put that into any program like Skype or OBS, and I'm going to show you how to use that to record yourself. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you need to do is pop into your web browser and go to kinoni.com. I'll have that linked in the video description. And you're going to go down to where it says Epocam or Epicam or however the heck you're supposed to pronounce that. And you're going to select download drivers for Windows 7 and later. We're going to wait for that to install and click on that once it's done. And then we're going to accept the user account control. Click on next. Click on I agree. Just install it in the default location usually. And then when it says do you want to install this device, we do because these are actual drivers that tell the computer how to interact with this wireless webcam and trust me I have installed this before in the past on many different systems and I have not had any security threats at all and I believe this software does run on the RTMP protocol so this is something that has been around for a while that allows different devices to communicate across the network and as I'll show you later there are different alternatives to this but I've found that this is the best one so I guess while this is installing I might as well go and pop up the phone and actually show you how to get this application. So what you want to do is go on over to the App Store. We're going to go to search and type in E-P-O-C-C-A-M. And we're going to have two different options. We're going to have one that is $6, which is the HD version. This allows you to go all the way up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is that buttery smooth thing. And the second one, the green one, is the one that only goes up to around 720p. And it also has a nasty watermark. They both do the same thing and I would recommend that if you just want to try this out that you start with the green one But if you want to get serious about your videography or your streaming But for now I'm just going to install the green one because this is on a different Apple account from what I purchased the software for my other phones on And then once it's done installing you can click on open and it asks if it wants access to the camera Well obviously because it's a wireless webcam so yes And it might even ask you for access to the microphone if it does also accept that And here we are here is our little little Epicam HD, but I'm actually going to exit out of the application right now. I'm going to pop into settings and make sure that you are connected to a 5 gigahertz wireless connection. If you have a lot of lag, and especially if you only have up to a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, this software is not recommended. So just click on your Wi-Fi settings and there should be a distinction between the 5 gigahertz or the 2.5 gigahertz. Make sure that you're locked into the 5 gigahertz. I had a bunch of problems. I was not even able to get to 1080p video for the best better part of a year and I just found this out and it was just like a revolution. So now that we have both of those installed what we can do is click on finish and then we're going to go into our start menu and unfortunately I'm on Windows 8 and we're going to see this program called Epicam Viewer. You're going to click on that. Once you have this software open it should be going into a searching mode on the computer. Then you can click on the Epicam HD on your cell phone and as you can see it's broadcasting and this is a common error that you might run into. It might just be like a white screen or something what I recommend you do is close out on the computer itself and then you're going to double tap the home button you're also going to close out on the iPhone then you're going to reload the computer and then reload the iPhone and hopefully it'll reconnect again and as you can see it did not and this is a problem that I've been running into because Keone released this new version of the software I think it's like version 2.8 or something it has not given me good results. The software that I run on my box over here is the older stuff. It works perfectly fine. It connects every time. So what I recommend you do if you're running into a similar problem as I am is I'm going to get to programs and features and I'm going to go down to where it says Keone drivers and I'm going to click on uninstall. Yes, I do want to uninstall it. And then I'm going to go straight back into my downloads folder. It's still downloaded onto the system. And I'm going to click on the installer once again and go through the the same process and as you can see right now it is now doing what's expected it has the searching mode one thing with the new version of the software is that it also supports you plugging your phone directly in through USB but I'm not really gonna showcase that because the beauty about this is that you can bring your phone anywhere so this is the mode that I most honestly recommend and it also works very well so now I'm going to load it up on the phone once again and let's see if it works one thing also in the troubleshooting your phone and your computer must 
must be connected to the same router. So if you have multiple different routers, make sure that it has the same default gateway. It will get confused, it won't know where to go, and it will not work at all. And there you go. As you can see right here, it is 640 by 480 scaled to 1080p. So I have another very annoying ad. And as you can see, the camera is working on my computer. There's both of my things. Here's my lovely little face. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on the plus button in OBS. I'm not sure how to do this in XSplit because I've never used that software before. And I'm going to click on add a video capture device. We can just click on OK then. And the device, as you can see, you have the option to have an EpiCam camera. And right here, this camera is the actual camera itself. And as you can see, you can just pull that in as your webcam. And that's as easy as it is to get it into OBS. And one thing also, you don't have to have the viewer open if you are doing this video capture device. See if I go to EpiCam camera, it automatically starts searching. And then once you're done with it, all you have to do is close it just like that. It'll go back into searching mode and you can close that right there. There are some Keone things that lurk in the task manager, but it's only taking about 16 megs of RAM. So it's not that resource intensive. And once I actually load it up, all it does is it takes up about 30% of this low power CPU. It's a pretty lightweight program. I've been able to game with it and have basically the same performance. Just the OBS program itself takes up a lot more CPU than this viewer. And I'll show you some video tests on an iPhone 7 with 1080p 60 FPS. I'd just like to note that because I'm having a few issues with the video capture device as you can see right here. I'm actually recording this by having the EpiCam viewer open in a window and then adding in a window capture into OBS and that is linking right to epicamtest.exe. Now, I did mention at the beginning of the video that there are different competitors, and I think the main one is NDI Camp. And it's paid application also running you about $10 to $20, depending on what version you actually decide to purchase. And in my experience, I've only gotten a maximum of 24 FPS, and that's what I'm showing you right here. 24 FPS, 1080p. It just does not work out for me. Now, NDI is really good when you're trying to have an input from a computer, this whole screen going into another computer. But when it's going from cell phone to computer, you know, I think that the RTMP protocol versus the NDI protocol is honestly the way to go. I've been using this, like I said, for well over a year. Although I do have some hiccups like I kind of showed you in the troubleshooting when you're trying to get it connected up. It basically works. You have the correct router and if you have sufficient bandwidth on that router, it is a killer killer application. I think that this is the cheapest way to get Logitech C920 better quality on your streams. Highly, highly recommended. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.